Hello, everyone. Uh, we're having a few people still roll into the webinar, so we're going to get started in about a minute or two. Uh, just hold on, and we'll be with you in a moment. All right, we're going to get started. Hello and welcome to the CAPSIM Contributor Program webinar. My name is Brendan Langan, and I am the manager of the product design and development team at CAPSIM. And I'm joined today by the president of CAPSIM Management Simulations, Rada Shafai. Thanks. Thanks, Brendan. Hello and welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Rada Shafai. I am the president of CAPSIM Management Simulations. I've been with Capsum for a little over 11 years, and I've also been an adjunct faculty at DePaul University for about eight years now, where I teach using our different simulations at the undergrad and grad levels. And I would like to start by giving you a brief introduction to Capsum. I know a lot of you have been longtime users, but I promise that this introduction is relevant to what we'll be talking about today, and I'll keep it very short, very brief. So CAPSIM has been around since 1985. We are used by over 2,000 professors over 800 universities acro across the globe. And uh, what you are seeing right now is uh, our presence, our global presence, where we have users that are using uh, our different simulations. Um, just last year, we had over 130,000 participants using our different simulations. Now, with this diverse group of users, comes a request for the ability to personalize the classroom experience because many professors want to have specific topics and lessons to cover and different expertise they bring to the classroom. Our professors use our simulations as a locomotive, a leading engine, if you will, that drives the teaching in the classroom. Then they attach any cart they want to it and focus on the content that's unique to the course they teach. However, over the years, professors have been asking for more of a user-driven experience in the simulation. Although many of them find creative ways to expand on what happened within the simulation, more have been asking for the ability to make our simulations more flexible by being able to introduce unique experiences to make the simulation experience as realistic as pos possible and elevate the student's experience. Now, to do that, we spent the past few years getting feedback from our customers and building a simulation from the ground up that allows for a lot of flexibility and user-driven experience. And today, we are happy to an announce a new chapter in our progress towards enriching the simulation experience for our professors by giving them more control over their simulation experience. And Brendan will be talking to you about how we are doing just that. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Retta. So to, uh, to really illustrate how all of this is possible, uh, we're gonna start by introducing Capsim Core. Uh, now, some of you in the audience are gonna be familiar with Capsim Core. You've seen it, maybe you've used it yourself. Uh, now, Capsim, so, Capsim Core is the business simulation platform that is used for the contributor program. And at its base, Capsim Core is an introductory level business simulation. In it, 
students run a company in a closed marketplace against a number of different companies. Professors can actually decide if students will compete against uh, four other companies or anywhere up to 10. Now, it's the student's goal to actually run one of these companies and prove in key measures each year. Uh, it's their goal to grow sustainably. When the simulation begins, students are running a, a company that has about $40 million in sales and one product. Uh, your company sells sensors. And sensors are used in a ton of diverse applications. So some of the examples you see on the screen now, uh, computer chips or smartphones or even elevators. Uh, customers in, uh, are using sensors for each of these purposes. Now, ultimately in the simulation, there are two different groups of customer segments. We have low-tech customers that focus more on price and high-tech customers who are looking for the latest and greatest in the market. Now, in the standard scenario for Capsum Core, students are asked to make decisions to run their company across four key areas, research and development, marketing, production, and finance. Each of these decision areas requires students to make at least one decision, and typically each department asks students to decide on three to four different things. So here, let's actually take a look at the simulation itself, and we have our research and development page. So the focus of research and development is to bring products, to, to design and develop new products to bring to the market. And you see here three decisions that you can see with these yellow sliders, uh, and I'll highlight them here for you. Students are required to determine a sensor's performance, size, and its reliability. Now in research and development, students can revise their current product offerings. As I mentioned before, there's only one product that they start with, or they can introduce new products to the market. And the customers that we're trying to reach, those low-tech or high-tech customers, actually appear on the screen in the perceptual map. Now, there's something important I want to point out here. Any change that I make or a student makes to the sensor's performance and size will actually adjust the product's positioning to these customers. So we could say that we're going to make the performance much improved and the size much smaller so we reach a higher tech segment. Now, also with this comes time. Each project that we actually work on takes time to bring to the market. So each of the decisions in Capsum Core corresponds to that engine that Rutta was mentioning. And they impact the engine by having things like the revision date of the project take longer depending on how far out or how much they improve their performance. Now, I mentioned the three other departments, so we're gonna go through each of these. In the marketing department, students are focused on bringing the product actually to market. And here we can see four decisions in front of us. First and foremost, students have to determine the price of their product. Is this gonna be something that more appeals to a low-tech customer and is cheaper, or can we afford to raise the price of it to reach a high-tech customer? We also have to decide on things like the promotion budget and the sales budget. And on the right side of the screen, we can see this area for investments, which shows awareness and accessibility. Now, an investment in your promotion budget will actually make customers more aware of the product. So in essence, the more I spend on a promotion budget, the higher my customer awareness. Again, it's important to reinforce that each decision in the simulation actually impacts the engine and how the company performs over time. In addition to the promotion and sales budget decisions, students also have to decide on the forecast. How many units are they going to sell of their sensor to the market? Then they have to make decisions in production. And here we can see three key decisions by product. First and foremost, students have to decide well, what are we going to actually schedule for our order quantity? How many units of our sensor are we going to produce for the market? But students also have the option to improve or modify their manufacturing plan as they see fit. For instance, investing in new capacity would make it available or would make it possible for a student to create more units of this sensor to deliver to the public. And they can also choose on an automation rating, or essentially how automated or robotic their plant actually is. Now again, these decisions drive all sorts of different things in the engine. Automation, for instance, 
will affect the labor cost of a unit because now we have machines that could be re replacing a manufacturing person's role. Now finally, in finance, the student is asked to put it all together and keep the company rolling. They have to make sure that their investments are funded and the company is profitable. So the key decision here lies if the student is going to raise capital or spend capital. And once they actually determine that, there are three decisions within each side if they are looking to bring money into the company or if they're looking to give back, perhaps it's buying back common stock or even issuing a dividend to their shareholders. So as you can see, we have a, a base of around 16 unique decisions that students are asked to make to drive their company forward. And this is a pretty solid foundation. We cover how to build a product, how to sell it, how to ship it and make it available to the public, and how to keep your company afloat. But we do work with some professors who want to teach more with the simulation. Uh, we actually had a professor approach us and, and say that they wanted to go deeper into the simulation model. And, and now with what Reda and I have been mentioning, we are now able to create custom modules that apply to the simulation. And we're happy to introduce this today. So as we saw in the standard scenario, we have these four departments, research and development, marketing, production, and finance. And as I mentioned, some professors want to dive deeper into this. They want to expand the decisions that students need to make to cover other areas. So we had a professor come to us recently and he taught a human capital management class but he didn't feel he could teach the subject adequately enough with the standard capsum core scenario. So we worked with him directly to design a module in human resources. And all of a sudden, voila, we have an additional module that students can now make decisions on in the simulation. Now this professor wanted students to grasp the concepts of human capital management by applying their knowledge to make decisions that impacted something. And what you're gonna see next is what we've actually created for human resources with this professor in Capsim Core. And as you see here, there are three key decisions uh, that are on the screen. First, we have the training and assembly teams for your manufacturing or production people. Uh, second, there's a decision to recruit and retain scientists that work on designing and developing your products in R&D. And finally, we have the compensation package of the sales team. Now, each of these decisions will impact the simulation in some form that we can see on the right side under this impacts area. And let's actually dive in with an example to, to look at the compensation package for a sales team. So when working with, uh, with this professor, uh, he wanted to highlight two key things. Uh, the first one was that competitive sales packages they drive two things in a business. The first one is lower turnover. The second is higher product accessibility. So I've highlighted these two impacts on the right for you. And let's go through a sample uh, example. If we choose to invest $2 million, which would be the full amount here for the, the sales compensation package, we're gonna see two things happen. First and foremost, we're gonna see our customer accessibility, it jumps up. More customers are now able to buy our product, whether that's through an online channel, in stores, or anything else. Now the second thing, and the big one that, that our professor wanted to get across was that turnover rate, our employee turnover rate, is going to decline. And in this case, we see a decline of around 20%. People want to work for a company that takes care of them. So here you're going to see eight different impacts that we, we can update. Uh, and this contributor program is, is opening up the doors to these impacts and more. These are actually only about half of the impacts that can be adjusted in the simulation. There are also things like short-term interest rate for financing debt that can be impacted by you. Customer awareness or labor and material costs. We can tie decisions that impact each of these areas that actually tie back to your, overalls, your overall company performance. So at this point, we can also take a look to see what would happen in a simulation like this where this actually plays out. Because when we're developing these new modules, well, we have to make sure that the simulation actually makes sense 
and that a story can come out of it that, that we can share with our students. So let's take a look at three different examples uh, within the simulation. Uh, and, and we use this example to show Team Andrews investing the full amount of $2 million in each of these measures, Team Baldwin making zero investment in any of the measures, and then Team Chester kind of playing the in-between. They're going to invest a million dollars in each of these three human resources uh, decisions. So we're going to simulate ahead two years and actually take a look at, at the reports to see how this plays out. And when we showed this to our professor, he, he was pretty ecstatic. Uh, the, the story made sense to him. So I'm giving you a snippet of the report that we actually see here. And there's three things that I want to highlight. First and foremost, let's take a look at the sales area. And we can see the Andrews team, the team that made that those huge investments across the board, uh, they actually have about $5 million more in sales revenue than Team Baldwin that made zero investment. And that makes sense. You know, their investment in the sales team are going to be increasing the accessibility that customers have to purchase this product. But we also see Baldwin in the short term has higher profit. They, uh, they're making about a million dollars more than Chester and over $1.5 million more than Andrews. And we can see that they're just not spending that $6 million each year in human resources investments. But if we scroll down, we can actually see that this might lead to some more trouble in the future. Uh, if we take a look at the turnover rate near the bottom, we can see that Baldwin is having increased turnover, 40% increase in turnover over those two years. And over time, this is really going to negatively impact their success. It's going to cost them a lot more to keep their employees trained and together. On the contrary, we have you know, the Andrews and Chester companies who have reduced their turnover rate rather significantly. So over time, we might see even further, uh, further success from these companies. Now, I use this example to illustrate that the decisions made in human resources are the only things that changed anything in this case. So we're highlighting these differences to show that what this professor has created actually impacts the bottom and top line of the company's performance. But let's also take a look at another example. Sometimes we work with professors who don't necessarily want to add new areas to the simulation, but instead they want to dive deeper into the simulation. And recently we worked with a professor who wanted exactly this. Uh, she wanted to expand on the research and development area. Specifically, she wanted to talk about the power of integrating technology into the product development process. And so when we take a look at this standard scenario, we have, again, each of the four departments. But in this case, we dive deeper into research and development and add decisions. And now all of a sudden, we have an advanced research and development area. And so let's actually take a look at what this looks like in the interface. So here we see this research and development page once again, and we can see our three standard decisions. And then if we scroll down just a touch, we see the advanced R&D near the bottom of the page. And there's one decision here to acquire technology and design licenses. And this is, uh, when working with this professor, she said, I really need to highlight that investments in technology can do a few things for a company. And we can see these impacts just to the right. First and foremost, she wanted to highlight that investments in technology can really reduce the amount of time that projects take to, to be completed. In our earlier example, when we talked about adjusting the performance and size of a sensor, well, we recognize that, like any change, a project will take time to actually come to market. So in this case, an investment in the technology and design licenses would reduce R&D cycle time, or this project time, by up to 15%. And you can imagine what a company would do with those, those serious improvements. That wasn't the only thing she wanted to highlight, though, as we also highlighted the yield that comes out of our production process. And in this case, this technology and, and, this technology and design license will actually reduce the yield by about 5%. But it's not all gravy, because we also have to pay for this. So in addition to the, uh, the $2 million investment here, there would also be an uptick of about 10% in administrative costs. 
Now, I've shown you this to illustrate an example of how we can dive a little bit deeper into an individual area. And these are things that our professors are creating already. There are multiple ways that we can add these contributions to the Capsim core simulation. And as we saw in our first example, a professor wanted to introduce a totally new functional area to the company. And out came human resources. And here, another professor wanted to dive deeper into a content area. And thus, we have an advanced research and development spot. So these are just two of the examples that some of our professors have already uh, created using our, our tools. And I'm going to turn it back over to Retta to talk a little bit more about what's coming next. Cool. Um, <clears throat> thanks, uh, Brendan. These, I want to add uh, these one other uh, professor we uh, worked with. Um, this professor wanted to dive deeper into the operations yeah. uh, uh, area. And he said, well, he loves how our simulation, uh, the functional integration that plays out in the simulation. But he, he said, I would love to take, um, take it deeper into the ops, yeah. into operations, because it's one of his focus uh, in his uh, class. And we created, we worked with him to create um, an ops module. And we have a team, as those of you who've worked with us for a long time know, we have a team of experts, including the uh, uh, CRC's customer service representatives, to the product design development teams, to account managers, and these are experts in our simulation. So what we do, as a new module is created, we run it through rigorous testing. And what was interesting to me personally, uh, I've been using our, th these simulations for over a decade, um, the way the simulation plays out is very different. Suddenly, by making this one change, uh, of course, it's a new department, the simulation had to be played differently. Um, if, you do, if you did not invest in operations, suddenly your company will be at a huge disadvantage. Um, and this is something that we were able to, uh, to bring this experience to one single professor. And this is what this um, uh, new tool is allowing us. It, it allows one professor or one university to focus on one thing that matters to them without impacting all the professors at all the universities. At the same time, that experience could be expanded and made available to other professors and other universities. Um, so I'm really excited about this new chapter in our organization, where we will be opening up our simulation to the collective wisdom of the experts, our professors, and allow them to shape the experience of the learner. Now, we are going uh, from a closed system, um, as you know, we've been, since I told you earlier, we've been around since 1985, uh, and we've had a closed system, and now we are going from that to um, a more of an open system. We're going there gradually. Um, what's really exciting for us is uh, here is that everything that Brendan showed you earlier is modifiable. The kinds of the departments that we can add, as we told you, a new department, HR department, or a new operations department or expanding any of the departments, any of that could be modified um, to the kinds of decisions that are available from within each department, to the levers within the simulation, to the effects of uh, these decisions, even the magnitude of these decisions and the timing of when do you want them to happen. Now, if you go to the next one, so this is a list of some of uh, what we have created internally. Uh, we've run a few uh, competitions internally here to encourage uh, our team to uh, come up with new ideas that we can create new, uh, to expand on the simulation experience. And we were delighted with what um, the Capsim, uh, we call them Capsimians, what with the Capsimians uh, had done. And we are so excited uh, about opening this up to our professors and to the community to see what they will come up with. So thank you, Retta. You're welcome. We, uh, it's, it's a very exciting time for Capsim right now. Uh, as Retta mentioned, we, we have now made this shift to really opening the simulation platform up to you, to the experts. And, and now we're actually accepting submissions uh, in this Capsim contributor program in the following areas. We're looking for submissions in marketing, accounting, operations, human resources, 
finance, and finally, ethics and social responsibility. So if you're sitting there on an idea and you're thinking, I know how to bring this topic to life in a simulation, and I would love if my students learned this firsthand, then please, we would love to see your submissions. Uh, following this webinar, uh, you, everyone that will be, everyone that has attended will be receiving an email uh, with some specific details on, on the program. Now, I do want to point out that this is beneficial to, to everyone. Our favorite submissions will actually earn cash prizes. And again, these details will be in the email following the webinar. But in the meantime, if you're looking for more details, uh, you can access more at go.capsim.com slash contributor. And as we sit here today, mm -hmm. opening up the Capsim Contributor Program to you, uh, we're now ready for really any questions that you have for us. And I've seen a few come in, uh, but over the next few minutes, we're going to go through and answer these. Please type anything into your comments box. This will come directly to Retta and I, and we'll go over these over the next few minutes. So days one, when we talked to uh, our customers about what we were planning on doing, so that was one question that uh, our customers were asking us. Uh, so I would like to start by addressing that first. A lot of our customers use different simulations, and then they ask whether we are going to bring this functionality to our uh, simulations, to Capstone Foundation. The answer is yes. We are planning on doing it over time. Um, so right now we are starting with Capsum Core. And another thing, we will do it in a way we want to guarantee that no disruption disruption to the professor happens if a professor does not want to see any of this. They don't need uh, to use it. They don't need to see it. Thank you, Rana. You're welcome. So we had a few questions come in, and I want to answer these kind of as we go. Uh, the first one, will these modules be available in Foundation or Capstone? Yeah, so um, in within the next month or so, we will be... Um, hosting another webinar where we will talk to our Capstone and Foundation uh, users. We have a plan. We've been talking to our customers. We were trying to see uh, what's the best way to introduce this to our Capstone and Foundation users with minimal disruption. And please stay tuned, and we will share with you more uh, about that. So the answer is yes. Uh, wait. Uh, wait for, for a little bit and then we will tell you more of how that's going to happen. So we've got a few more questions that have come in. Uh, so this one points out that, you know, the key to the current simulation is how decisions in one functional area mm -hmm. impact the other areas yeah. and, and the unknown impacts that, that kind of come out of there. How are we handling that? So um, first, what we we are we try to learn from uh, the the experiences that we run. We we uh, tested, we created a lot of uh, tests to ensure that uh, the simulation will function is robust. It also, the, the results are teachable. Um, so we have the different teams here within Capsum that uh, go through a lot of scenarios and then they adjust how the uh, the decisions, uh, the new decisions that were introduced to simulation how they impact the organization overall. And we make sure that it's, uh, we, had, uh, we have a system that we use to test all the submissions to make sure that uh, they are teachable, realistic, um, they add value. Uh, so we have a system and we will be more than happy to show, uh, show what we have to you and give us feedback. If you think um, these, there are different ways we can improve on how we're doing it, uh, let us know and we'll be more than happy to implement. Yeah, and just to to add on to that, I have uh, I've spent a good amount of hours doing some yeah. testing on on some of these modules firsthand, and I can say it's it's been a ton of fun. Uh, oftentimes, when working with a professor firsthand, we we have a an idea where where things start, and um, so in in the HR example, uh, I can give you, I was working with this professor, and he said that he wanted to impact turnover rate by seventy five percent, and we took a look at where the current turnover rate is in the simulation. The base rate is 10%. So essentially what that meant was we wanted to raise this up to 
close to 20 percent and almost all the way down to, to, to nothing with no turnover in a company uh, and and after playing through this we realized you know what this is a bit unrealistic so we went back to the drawing board and tested through this process at a few different measures and we settled on about a 20 to 30 percent impact being something that that makes a lot of sense and would be realistic. So a lot of this testing mm -hmm. goes through numerous different cycles when we're looking for answers. Uh, another example is with the ops module that uh, we created. Um, some of the results, uh, some, some of how the simulation played out uh, crippled, uh, would cripple the students. So we, since we're working with an expert, and that's why we're reaching out to experts, uh, we went back to him and said, well, if these are the decisions that you want to make, and these are the impacts and the magnitude, um, the simulation will be really hard. So we were, went back and forth until we came to um, uh, results that uh, made it challenging enough, yet doable. Uh, so I've got, a, I've got a question from Sean Doyle uh, that says strategy and policy. Sean, if you can expand on that a little bit, I'd love to answer that question. Uh, if you're asking if we're looking for submissions in those areas, uh, then the answer would be ideally we're focusing on these six areas to start. But if you do have other ideas, we'd love to hear them. Uh, we're always looking to add on to the simulation. Right, so um, I want to quote um, one of uh, our directors here, uh, uh, Jordan uh, Novak. Um, one of the things that uh, he, he brought in uh, to the discussion was um, we have no idea what um, these experts will come up with, they might come up with things that we never thought about. And if that's the result of what we are doing, then we call that a success. And I, I love that. So I want to uh, echo what uh, Brendan said. Um, these are the things that we thought we would like to work on. But if somebody thinks there is an area we could focus on, if you tell us, show us the idea, show us what you're thinking, and we are all ears, we're open. I've got a question from Larry Chastain. Uh, some of my students get lost in the current simulation. Have these new modules added too many decisions and complexity? Well, Larry, I think the, the, the thing to consider is, does this make sense for your class? Uh, as Rutta mentioned, first and foremost, these are optional additions. If you find an area that you want to expand more into or you want to introduce into your class, then it could be a great, uh, a great option. But for many people, it may not be. It really depends on the focus of your class, your learning objectives, and what you're trying to teach. I do just want to stress that these are not mandatory. Mm -hmm. As a professor, you will have the option to activate a module and, and turn it on for your class. Uh, another thing um, that I would like to uh, point out, so we wanted to introduce this to Capsum uh, Core first. Capsum Core is a very simplified simulation. So you have sliders instead of uh, boxes like what we have in Capstone and Foundation. And um, we wanted to see whether when we add these departments to a simulation that's simple, does it make it complex enough to allow professors to focus on what's unique to them in the classroom? At the same time, there's this other feature that we added to Capsum Core. Uh, and when we talk about uh, how, Cap how this feature will be added to Capstone and Foundation, we will tell you more about this. So this, the feature that we're talking about is um, de the ability to de-emphasize the decisions that are made in different departments. So for example, instead of uh, all the decisions that Brendan showed you that students are required to make in finance, you could turn on a policy decision where the only thing that students do is decide, what, decide what's the financial policy of the organization. That uh, by de-emphasizing on that decision, it gives you more time to focus on other areas. And we have this functionality av available to any one department at a time. And there are, we're looking at different ways to make this available in multiple departments, but we don't have that yet. But so this feature allows you to simplify or um, make the simulation less complex, which gives you more time to focus on different areas if you want. Uh, but I also want to go back to what Brendan said. This is absolutely optional. If a professor does not want it, they really don't need to in, uh, introduce it or include it. And uh, Larry, uh, um, if you want to chat further, we'll be more than happy to chat with you about that. So we've got a ton of questions rolling in. Thanks for all the interest, guys. This is, uh, this is awesome to see. 
Um, to add on with, with regards to policy decisions, this, uh, th this concept of de-emphasizing certain areas really came about with professors in, uh, in different kind of areas of the business saying that, ah, I want to use your simulation to teach marketing, but I don't want to have to worry about finance. And so that is kind of in response to this. It allows a professor now to dive deeper into the marketing function while essentially turning off the financial decisions that are required. Uh, we've got a question from David Nock. Hello, David. Uh, Capsum Core, will there be more detailed reports, especially accounting and financial reports? And uh, yeah, absolutely. We're actually rolling this feature out uh, in the next two weeks for Capsum Core games. Uh, this will be part of the Capsum Core bundle. Uh, now, when we released Capsum Core, it had a focus at more of a foundational level business learning. Um, so we took out some of the added detail there in the reports, but we recognize that People want to use this for different purposes. So David, uh, you'll be happy to know that the additional reports, the annual reports and the more detailed uh, financial statements from the, the balance sheet, the cash flow statement and the income statement will all have more detail provided. I've got a question from, uh, I've got another question from mm -hmm. David. Mm -hmm. uh, can we modify the industry from manufacturing to service industry? Um, so what we are doing right now, uh, the answer is no. Uh, we have, we are working on different things outside of this engine, outside of this model. Um, we'll be more than happy to tell you uh, about that. We are testing some things, uh, and, uh, some of, some things we test for longer until we get it right, um, before we launch it. So as of right now, we are not doing it yet in this engine. So, um, uh, David, you might be familiar with the inbox. We have a lot of ideas there that we are testing. Um, I can have Sam chat with you further about that. All right, scrolling through a few more of these. So I've got a question about Global DNA from Thad Llewellyn. Mm -hmm. uh, Global DNA, which we are using for the first time this fall, uh, when will some of these features be available for that? We like the advanced marketing, in labor negotiations from Capstone that are not available in Global DNA. Well, at this point, Thad, we are not making the module builder available for Global DNA. Uh, so the same base version of Global DNA is what's available. However, yeah. So um, can we? Could I have somebody chat with you to ask you more questions about that? Because um, we have um, we have some ideas that we've been playing around with um, specifically. So if you wanted um, the feedback we got with the global DNA is uh, we were thinking about adding more complexity. Uh, we were told that it's complex and adding anything to it will um, make the students experience in the classroom more difficult. So what we did is uh, launching Capsum Global, which is a simplified version of global DNA. Uh, it's a hybrid, if you will, between global DNA and um, Capsum Core, but then we are making it possible to add all these modules to Capsum Global. But any feedback you could give us, any information, more information you could give us about this would be much appreciated. Okay, a few more questions that are just rolling in. Uh, all right, from David Nock again, what is the turnaround time from idea submission to testing to approval and release? Um, <laughs> so uh, we can do things really fast. Uh, what we are learning, um, so we have uh, rules. If the submission follows these rules, then it's really fast. Uh, we have a form, um, so we will connect whoever is interested in creating this. We'll connect them with um, internal uh, experts who will guide them through the process. If you follow, uh, give us all the information, creating it literally takes not a, I don't know, a day. So some of the things that, I, I mean, in the, so in the research and development example, there was mm -hmm. only one decision that, that came together over the span of an hour. Yeah. Um, we went down to a university to build out the advanced operations module that, yeah. that Reda discussed and 
we had talked about things ahead of time. So we had a frame of reference that mm -hmm. this professor wanted to teach more on the supply chain and uh, sourcing side of things. Mm -hmm. uh, but we sat together for two hours with a whiteboard uh, and worked this out. And then when it came back mm -hmm. to the office, we did two weeks of testing through this. Um, made some modifications mm -hmm. and went back and forth with the professor. Mm -hmm. Within three weeks, this was live in his classroom mm -hmm. and it's actually being used right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so that turnaround time was about three mm -hmm. weeks. Mm -hmm. In another case, it's been much shorter. So it, it has ranged from anything down to about a week after testing is thoroughly done on it up to around a month. But mm -hmm. a lot of this depends on the back and forth mm -hmm. and uh, making sure that what you want to actually mm -hmm. create is appearing in the mm -hmm. simulation. So what we learned, uh, David, is um, it's actually uh, thing, uh, somebody is, uh, is in this uh, webinar. He gave us uh, this feedback, um, ensuring that the simulation functions and functions properly. So what we learned uh, since we've been testing it for a few months now, uh, testing it is what takes a lot of time. Testing it and calibrating it to make sure that it functions the way we want it to function. Um, so that's one. The second thing is, it depends on how many we have in the pipeline. So if we have 20 that we are working on, then things will be delayed. Um, if there's only one we're working on, it's much faster. If the professor who's uh, asking us to build something, so, and we're talking about contributor program. Um, if they know everything that they're doing and they give us all the, uh, the data, the impact, um, then it will take a lot less. Uh, I've got a question from Charles Fenner. I teach ethics. Are you looking for fines due to waste, or are you looking for providing a CSR report that adds to productivity or lowers HR turnover? Well, Charles, honestly, the uh, this is this is really open. Um, with any submission that's coming in from from any of you or the anyone else that participates in the contributor program. We're looking for what you're passionate about. We're looking for what you want to teach alongside the simulation. So uh, typically in the past, we've seen individual cases or vignettes mm -hmm. that, that uh, ask students to handle a, a sticky situation. Um, it could be something around that. It could be anything that you dream up. Uh, if, if you want to talk more about that, I would love to have a detailed conversation, though, to, to hear about what you're thinking. And uh, I would like to add... Um it would help a lot once you look at the different ways you could impact the organization. Then as an expert in ethics um, and social responsibility, you could decide what would make more sense. Um, so I also recommend you take a look at that when, when you decide um, what to create or what to come up with. Can they create more than one? They have multiple submissions. I don't see why. Uh, no, absolutely. Yeah. You, can, uh, you can create as many as you'd like. Uh, so the, the submission process, um, uh, th there will be more details in the email that follows, but we are open to whatever ideas you have, and then you'd be working alongside us firsthand to actually bring this to life. So I've got uh, a few more questions that have rolled in. Uh, one from our friend Frank Tamborelli. Are there any plans to allow for quarterly decisions versus annual decisions? To make the simulation more real life. Mm -hmm. um, so we actually uh, we tested this uh, four months, months ago. ago. Yeah. Four months ago. Um, so we played around with uh, with being able to do that, and we created a version. And this, all right, whatever I'm talking about, um, I'm not saying this is something that's available now. So I just want to make sure that I'm not understood. So we had a version that we created to play around with, and we kept it in the background. Uh, we were looking for somebody to give us feedback. Uh, if we can talk to you more about that, I would love. Uh, we would love to hear uh, more about how, because um, it looked to us once we created it, it looked like it's um, a regular simulation that we have with more rounds where you make more decisions. Uh, if we can understand it better, it would help us uh, create this. It's doable. We can do it. Um, but we would like to learn more. Uh, another question. Is there any cost to the professors involved with the development of a new module? Okay. So um, what we are going to do, this is something we have big plans for what we can do with this. Right now, we're looking for 
professors who submit suggestions and then we pick the best and we they are awarded monetary prize but if somebody if somebody suggests something that's good they didn't win they want it to be built uh, we will not charge them for building this what we want to do I guess I could uh, what we want to do is create a place where professors can uh, can add modules they they can suggest them to us and then we build them and then enrich the experience of the simulation but we have specific plan of how we wanted to do it that one we will announce it around january um but to answer that question specifically uh no we will not charge the plan right now is we're not going to charge professors uh if they want to uh submit an idea and we build it and make it available uh to the professor or to other customers so that's uh that's what we are planning on doing and that more information will be shared with you closer to january about that all right we've got a uh, i've got a comment uh from marcelo carbonari mm -hmm. hello marcelo uh he says this is a fantastic opportunity for us to be able to propose new reports mm -hmm. such as eva from mm -hmm. a capital cost mm -hmm. simulation offering an advanced finance module primarily for capstone global dna mm -hmm. and yeah this is uh, marcelo this is exactly what yeah. we're looking for it's it's the your levels of yeah. expertise the the things that you've studied and 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 published on or or teach today that you want to bring to life within the simulation and we're hoping that mm -hmm. that this sparks new ideas with everyone yeah. so thank you for the great suggestion yeah. uh will these new modules be available to everyone uh so How's it going, Larry? <laughs> uh, so these modules, anything that, that is created, uh, first and foremost will be available to you. So Larry, if you were to build out a module in, uh, in advanced marketing, for instance, well, you could make that available to your class. Now what Retta was mentioning just a moment ago um, that we'll be talking about later on this year and in January of next year uh, is, is taking that to the next level. Yeah. Uh, so when, uh, Larry, when we talked to customers we were soliciting feedback and what we heard, some customers told us, uh, some universities told us, we want to build something and we want to make it available only to our students within that university and no one else. And we are okay with that. So we want to make that possible. If a, uh, if a university wants to create something, uh, we might have some uh, rules. We're still learning, trying to learn by talking to, uh, uh, to our customers. Um, so if a professor wants to build something and they want to make it available to them themselves only, we're thinking about making that uh, possible. And same thing, a university wants to make something available to them. Uh, what we heard from customers from the universities was uh, that they want to uh, create an experience that's only available through that university. And we are open to that. Uh, if you have any feedback about that, Larry, and everybody, if you have any feedback about what we're telling you, please reach out to us. Uh, we flourish based on the feedback that you give us. So some of the other questions coming in have, uh, well, while well, well, great, some suggestions on uh, on some of our simulations, asking about some of the other things. Um, I, I'll answer those separately. Uh, I, I don't want to confuse any of the the listeners here who, who are not familiar with some of these other simulations. So I'll be reaching out to you guys directly. Um, but at this point, we are winding down. If you guys have any more questions, please submit now. We'll still be hanging around uh, here for a few minutes, um, answering anything that you might have. Uh, but I hope that we've laid out, at least fairly clearly, on the process, mm -hmm. on how some of these things can be used uh, within a simulation and, and the process of actually creating it. As I mentioned uh, right near the end of the presentation, uh, Everyone that is present today will be receiving an email with more details on next steps and how to actually create these firsthand. So I asked you this, uh, I would like to just to be, um, emphasize, if you have feedback about what we told you were planning on doing, you would like to share with us, please uh, reach out, um, send us a message or you could connect with uh, some of our team members and tell us what you think. All right, we've got a question from Oscar Figueroa. Hello. Uh, can we submit improvements to current reports in our simulations? 
uh, for example, annual reports mm -hmm. for foundation and capstone. Mm -hmm. So after right now we we aren't uh, accepting anything uh, that actually well, updates the reports. Well, but, but I think maybe he, um, so we we have an, a current channel, uh, Oscar. So if you have any suggestions, if you think something could be improved, uh, please do send an email. Uh, talk to our support team, and uh, if it's uh, uh, first, if it's an issue, we will fix it. If it's an improvement, we have a. Uh, so uh, Brendan leads the team that's in charge of uh, making these improvements, and we'll be more than happy to uh, to look into it and um, uh, work on making improvements. So absolutely, the, um, I just want to make sure that uh, one thing that I'm going to emphasize on next time we'll talk to all our users um, with the development of these new simulations, we'll never stop improving our existing ones. We just want to make sure that we do it in a way that does not disrupt our over 100, 130,000 customers that are using it. All right, another question from Frank Tamborelli. What is the incremental cost to the students for these features? Um, we're still working on, on that. So what we're thinking uh, to do is um, a one fee that gives access uh, within the simulation. So if you pay, uh, for example, Capsum Core $39.99, or if you have the bundle $53.99, add uh, a base fee and that gives access to all the modules, all um, the additions. Um, so we've been testing few models and we want to simplify it. If you have uh, feedback about that, please, we would love to hear from you and we will share with you uh, what we're thinking about doing and tell us what you think. Uh Larry, I would like to use other folks' modules. I'm with you. Uh, I, it's been actually a real pleasure to see what's already been created. Um, and uh, as Rhoda mentioned, mm -hmm. we do a lot of testing internally. Yeah. Uh, we we play a lot of games against each other. The list. Yeah. Um, so when we are working through uh, the, a new simulation cool. or a new module, it is an absolute blast to work with. Um, so uh, this will be available to you mm -hmm. in the future. Yeah, so some of these, uh, what you see in the background, uh, some of these work, uh, we absolutely love playing around with them. The Internet of Things, for example, is, uh, yeah, we, yeah it's, it's relevant to the simulations themselves, and they also add a very interesting twist to the simulation. Um, so some of these, what we are building, uh, I want to clarify something. Uh, this contrib uh, contributor program, we will have a lot of uh, we will uh, build um, modules internally and when we have a submission and we um, we basically make these modules that were built available under one umbrella this is basically capsum modules all these will be available to uh, uh, to you uh, Larry and and I think uh, a lot of our professors will have a blast playing with the simulation that has some of these modules that we created and we can't wait to uh, to get your feedback. If any one of you want, they want to see how these modules uh, look, they can talk to um, uh, the person they're going to be connecting with. Yeah, so yeah. you'll, uh, it, again, in the email, there will be more details, um, but there will be a personal contact that you can reach yeah. out to. So if you want to see anything that's already been created, uh, just ask. Uh, we, we'd love to show you. Uh, Another question from David Knox. Can you have multiple modules active, uh, for example, HR and TQM and advanced operations? Yes, absolutely. Um, so this is something that uh, we've been working on over the past few months, and this is available to anyone that would be adding a module can add additional modules on top of that. One of the things you have to consider, mm -hmm. and one of the things that we've really had to consider in testing this is then how the game actually plays out. Mm -hmm. um, when we're introducing these new levels uh, and, and a new dimension into the system, uh, things change. I showed you guys the example earlier today of human resources where we kept decisions uh, static mm -hmm. except for those three areas, those three decisions in human resources. Um, but that is also a situation that would change. You yeah. know, uh, student-run companies or even the computer-run companies mm -hmm. uh, that, that our uh, AI works mm -hmm. with, make decisions based on the environment. And so mm -hmm. these decisions then work in the system totally differently. Yeah, for example, you don't want your labor costs to be reduced by 80 or 90 percent. We created, uh, since we've been testing this idea for quite some time, we created some um, ways to ensure 
that um, things don't get out of uh, out of hand with these reductions in, in impacts and make them more realistic. So I've got just a, a few more questions here before we close up. Um, will you be available during the AOM conference next month? And that is August 10th to 14th. AOM this mm -hmm. year is in Chicago. Chicago, yeah. Uh, it's in our backyard. Um, I, for, for those of you who don't know, Capsum's headquarters are in downtown Chicago. Uh, we're right over by the mm -hmm. Art Institute and Millennium Park. And we will be at uh, the Academy of Management mm -hmm. Conference next month. So we encourage anyone who is at Academy of Management to stop by, chat with us. And if you have specific questions, we will have some, some experts on hand to talk. Yeah, you can. Um, so what Brendan is saying, they can stop by the office. If you want to come to the office, visit our office. Feel free to do so. And we have a ping pong table, those of you who love ping pong like we do, <laughs> so we can play a little bit. Uh, we would love to uh, hear from you and get feedback. Uh, all right. Did you send the PowerPoint used today? Uh, we haven't sent that out yet. Uh, we will make that available to those of you who are present, though. So absolutely. Thank you, Luigi. I know that you, uh, you had to step out. But we will be making the PowerPoint available. All right, and I think that is a wrap for all of the questions that have come in. Uh, we, uh, Rada and I just really want to thank you for your time today. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Um, we knew coming in that talking about this would be probably shorter than the, the Q&A <laughs> session after. Um, but uh, I, I want to thank everyone uh, for the, the detailed mm -hmm. questions and your curiosity mm -hmm. about this. Uh, Realistically, you are the power behind the, the mm -hmm. contributor program. So we're excited to work with every one of you. Um, and thank you for your time, Rada. Thank you. So we, there's more that we are planning on doing, and we can't wait to share with you everything. Um, so this is the start, what we are um, about to do, and what um, this experience of uh, starting to build the new modules with the uh, experts uh, taught us so much, and uh, we can't wait to share with you everything that we have um, in store. Thank you. All right. Thank you for your time. We'll be talking soon.